previous video, I looked at the specification for the CS2R closed loop stepper drive from Leadshine. I thought I'd spend a few minutes now looking at the um, uh, actual configuration of it um, and setting it up to do a simple uh, positioning application. Uh, so in front of me here, I've got uh, the drive itself, the CS2R. Um, I've got uh, one of the CSM motors here, okay, and the uh, associated cabling. I've wired up my I.O. here, so my, I've got some inputs on here, um, and um, I've got my power cables and my encoder cables connected and my power supply for the unit. Um, I'm operating on 24 volts in this particular instance. Um, I've also uh, installed and downloaded the um, uh, Motion Studio from uh, Leadshine, um, and that's on the PC, so let's have a look at that now. Um, so this is the Motion Studio software. Um, the first thing, obviously, you want to do is establish communications. Um, it's got an RS-232 port built in, so you can basically use the, um, the pre-made cable um, and connect to it, which I've already done. As you can see, I'm on COM4, RS-232, and I'm already connected. So that's good. So we can look at the configuration. And we've got the I.O. configuration. Now, within the I.O. configuration here, okay, We've got some input, an input tab and an output tab. So you can see my seven inputs and my three outputs here. And also under each one, we've got input status and control. Okay? So the input status tells me how it's configured now, and the control enables me to configure it. Okay? So for instance, in my input status here, I can see that my first input is set as a servo on, my enable input. Uh, my second input is set as negative limit. My third input is my home input. My fourth input is my um, sequence select input. And my fifth, sixth and seventh inputs are my sequence address inputs. So if I were to set a binary pattern on uh, the sequence address inputs and trigger it using the sequence select input, then I will perform that particular move. And I can also set the functionality to anything I like here by changing the value. So if I wanted a jog input, I could set an input for jog um, under the function. And I can set the polarity here as normally open or normally closed. So it's quite flexible in that respect. And the same applies for the outputs. I can select different functions here. and the active level here. So that's my I.O. configured. I don't want to change it, so we'll leave it as it is. And I've also got a complete parameter list. Takes a few seconds to download. And this gives me access to every single parameter in the product so I can change them if, I if, I'm, if I'm required to or I need to. So there they all are, okay? And I can fast select them here by choosing just the control parameters or the gain adjustment parameters, so on and so forth. Now, there's also a run uh, uh, selection here. So I can do a trial run. Um, I can enable this, uh, the servo and I can jog it just to see that my wiring is correct and everything is fine. I can perform a, si a simple little move. I can basically say position one, jog it a different position, position two, set a um, wait time and a, and a number of cycles and press run. And it performs that little sequence. So we can just test the system out and make sure that it works. Once we've established that the system is actually operational and everything's okay, the next thing we need to do is um, actually set some sequences in, which is what we wanted to do in the first place. So under motion, we can see this, in, uh, this selection drop-down menu here, PTP. So let's have a look at PTP, okay? So this is our programming mode. This is where we do all the work, okay? So the first thing in the programming mode, we've got this control configuration element here. So as mentioned about the triggering, 
um, the triggering can either be either the rising edge trigger, a single or a double trigger. Okay, we can set homing on power up. We can absolute save the abs uh, absolute encoder position, and we can change the uh, the trigger level, either active high or active low. We've also got some software limits that we can set, and our homing definition here. So we can select our homing de definition, and if we've got an emergency stop situation, how quickly we stop here. Under path parameters, we can set up our sequences. Here we can see that we've got uh, path ID from 0 to 15. So we can have 16 different positions that we can store within this uh, uh, table. And if we take, for instance, number 4, we can select that to be a, a function. We can give it a local position, speed mode, homing mode, or an e-stop mode. Okay, I've set some up already. I've set um, sequence zero to home, sequence one to uh, absolute 10,000, sequence two to absolute 20,000, and sequence three to uh, uh, incremental 50,000, and set varying speeds for those tasks, which, which enables me to um, select them from our binary address, which we talked about earlier. So if I was to select on, the, on those inputs um, zero inputs, then I'll home the unit. If I select input one, address one, then I will basically perform the absolute move 10,000. And if I have address three, which is input one and input two active at the same time, then I will perform an incremental move of 50,000 steps. So let's have a look at that in action. So as I said, I can home using input zero. My system is now homing. And due to my homing definition, I did a, a move out, a move back at different speeds to get a nice defined home position. My home, my first move, my second move, and my third incremental move, which I can repeat and I can then just select those as and when I like. And that's a basic overview of the over the system. We can basically see here that we can select, upload and download those values and write them to the unit. Okay. We've also got a alarm screen here where we can see the history of the alarms and the current state of the product. And we've got a status monitor which defines our positions and our current state of our inputs and our outputs. Well, I hope you found that useful. Um, it was just, as I said, just a quick overview of the product. And if you need further information, then we'd be happy to provide it. Um, if you need to contact us, then please feel free to contact us at the, at the details below. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick overview and uh, if you did then please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.